So I'm making this video as a quick start on SSH and I'm just going to go over the basics. And the reason for this, I've got a couple of courses up and coming that are going to require SSH. So I thought I'd run over the basics in one video so I'm not repeating myself in the other series. So the first thing you need to check is if you've got SSH installed. And if you're on Linux or Mac, you've probably got it. And if you're on Windows and you've got updates up until late 2018, you also have it. So the best way to find out is just open up your terminal and type SSH and then hit enter. And if you get feedback like this with the flags, then obviously you know you have it installed. If you're on Windows, I recommend you follow along with PowerShell because the commands that are type here in Linux will be the same in PowerShell. PowerShell works it out for you. So the next thing you're going to do is just check if you've got a .ssh directory and that is in the root of your user account. So obviously on Linux you can just type the tilde key and it'll take you to your home directory. And under Windows it's wherever you've got your operating system installed, usually on the C drive, under users and then your username. And if you just type in ls-la that'll list out all the items. And you can see here as the default install it doesn't have a .ssh folder. And that's because we haven't created any keys yet. On some operating systems, you might have a default key already made for you. So you don't have to follow this next step. So the next thing you want to do is type SSH hyphen key gen and give it dash T and then space and then RSA and then just hit enter. And that's generating the private and public key pair for us. And it'll ask you where you want to save it and just keep this as a default. And as you can see, like I say, it's dot SSH folder in your home directory. Now it'll say, do you want to put a password on this key? And this password is just for this key. It's not for when you connect into remote servers. And this is just an extra step of security. So in case somebody gets their hands on your keys, they can't use it without knowing the password as well. So this is up to you. I'm not going to use it. So I'm just going to hit enter and then enter again. You see that's created the key for us. So if I just list out my directories again, showing my hidden ones as well. You see we now have a .ssh folder. So I'm going to cd into that ssh folder. And if I just list out all the items again and show hidden ones, we can see we now have our key, our private key, and our public key here. So the next thing I'm going to do is just create a virtual machine for us to log into via ssh to show you how it works. So for this, I'm going to use DigitalOcean. I'll pop a link in the description as well, and that's an affiliate link. So if you do end up using it, I'll get a bit of a kit back as well to help me out. Uh, it also gives you some free credit, so you can try it out for a month or sometimes it's two months. Uh, completely free of charge, so it's not going to cost you anything at all. So I've just created up a test project here, and I'm going to create a new droplet in it. And DigitalOcean called the VM's droplets, so if you hear me say VM or droplet, I'm referring to the same thing. So for this, I'm just going to create a Ubuntu LTS virtual machine. Uh, the level of the machine doesn't matter, so I'm just going to pick the bottom one. I'm just going to pick the nearest data center to me, which is London. Obviously, you can pick any you like. And then for authentication, it's asking for SSH key. Now, I don't have uh, this current key in DigitalOcean yet because I've only just created it. So I'm just going to click New SSH key. And it wants the SSH key content. And this is the public key. So if we jump back over to our terminal, so we just get the contents of that public key. So we can just do a cat and it's id underscore rsa dot pub. And if you just hit enter, and now it cats out the public key. So if we just copy this and we just put this into the key content, and then we just need to give it a name. And this name doesn't really matter. It's just something that you can recognize this key by within DigitalOcean. And then you just click add SSH key. And then I'm just going to create this droplet and that'll be created in less than a minute for us. So the reason why we put our public key in here is because whilst DigitalOcean is setting up the server, it's going to copy our public key onto this virtual machine. So that allows us then to connect to it. So now we can see our droplet has been created and it's given us an IP address here. So let's just copy this. And now the next thing we want to do is connect into this droplet. So to do that, it's SSH, and then we need to give it the username. And this is the username on the machine we're trying to log into. So at the moment, there is only a root user account. So we can type in root, and then we just need to give an at symbol, and then the IP address. So I'm just going to paste this in. So this is saying SSH into this machine uh, using the user root. So we just hit enter. So what this is saying now, it's saying, hmm, okay, so you're trying to connect to this host, uh, but we don't know of this fingerprint, this public key. 
So what's happened there, the server's sending down its public key and saying, do you recognize this? Are you sure? So obviously our system doesn't recognize it at the moment because we've never connected to this server because it's only just been created. So if you ever get this message in the future and you haven't changed the SSH key, then it might need to look into security because something might have happened. But because this is a brand new server, we're just going to say yes, we recognize this public key. So as you can see now on our local system, it's added the server's public key. So next time it won't ask you whether you recognize it or not. Our system knows that we recognize it and it'll just connect in automatically. And you see now we're connected in as the root user and this is the host name of the virtual machine. And now we can just type exit and that puts us back into our local machine. So let's try and connect just once more. And if you just use the up and down arrow keys, you can cycle through your recent commands. You can get your previous command of SSH root and then the IP address so enter. And you can see this time round, it doesn't ask us do we recognize the public key because it already knows we do and we're into the system. So I'm just going to exit out of this again. And as you can see, so we just put so we just put that command again. As you can see, it's not easily recognizable. There's quite a bit of information there. So if you've only got one or two servers, you know, you might get away with this. But if you've got multiple servers, this can be a pain to remember. So what we can do is create an SSH config. This allows us to give aliases to the username and the IP addresses. So if we just list out the contents of our .ssh directory again, uh, you can see there's actually a new file in here now called known hosts. And this is where the system has put the public key from the uh, remote server. So if we just cut that out, you can see that's the public key coming from this server. So that's how our system knows that we've seen this server before and we can trust it. And on the remote server, there'll also be known hosts with a copy of our local public key. So the server knows that it is us that's trying to connect. Yeah, so anyway, so let's sort this config out. Um, so at the moment, by default, there isn't a config. So let's just create one. So I'm just going to use touch and we just call this config. You don't need to give it a file extension or a period in front, just config and that's, that's all it needs. Now you need to open this up in a text editor. I'm just going to use Vim for this. Now you need to open up this file in a plain text editor. So I'm just going to use um, Vim Improve for this. And now we just build up our config. So the first thing we need to do is give this an alias. So we can do this by typing host and then a space and then whatever name you want. So I'm just going to call this DO, short for Digital Ocean. Obviously you'd be more descriptive with yours and give it the name of the website you're hosting on there. So it's easily recognizable and easy to remember. If you just come down to the next line and then hit tab to come in, and then you want to type in host name and notice the capital H and the capital N there and then give it a space and then give it the host name. So we're just using an IP at the moment. We don't have a domain set up towards this. So it's 178.62.120.245. And obviously you put your IP address in there Then come down to the next line, tab in again, and then you give it the user. So we're logging in currently as root, so we're just going to use root. Now obviously if you create another user, then here you put the name in of the user that you want to log in using SSH. So then on the um, next line, uh, we need to give it a identity file. So it's just identity and then file. I know it's the capitalization again, because that's important. And then it's where our private key is held. So obviously that's in the root directory it's in our .ssh folder and the key is id underscore rsa and not .pub because that's our public key we want our private key here there's also many other options you can put in here so if you need anything else give that a search another common one people normally put in is port but it doesn't really matter if it's the default port which it is and that's port 22 so that, that's up to you whether you want to add that in or not so once we have them lines in, we can just save and quit. So now instead of typing out SSH, the username, and then the IP, we can just reference our alias in our config. So we can just type in SSH space and then DO and hit enter. And you can see that now connects us into our machine. And that's much easier to remember than typing everything out. So I just wanted to point out if you're adding multiple hosts, all you do is come down to the next line, type in host, and then basically just copy this block below it here. So that's everything you need to know about logging into remote systems with SSH. As you can see, it's very simple, and if you use config files, it makes things even easier.